Do you find yourself being hard on yourself? Are you quite critical? Maybe you're quite judgmental. Do you find yourself having a real negative attitude towards life, people, relationships? Maybe you're thinking, oh, what's the, worth, what's the point of relationships? They're all doomed. Maybe dating's doomed. Life is doomed. Maybe you have that kind of attitude. Welcome to The Nice Guy Show. I'm your host, Faisal Coco, and I'm joined with Ari and Chuck. We are three No More Mr. Nice Guy coaches, and we're here to help and support you to be the best version of yourself. Now, when it comes to mental attitude, a lot of nice guys struggle with having a positive mental attitude. Most of the time, their default setting is set on critical. It's a problem. Everything seems like a problem. Everything's a negative. And as they get older, they become more negative. Guys, any of you struggle with a negative mindset? Chuck? Yeah, that's been something that I've struggled with quite a bit. And I found that like, that negative mindset is like a bully in your brain that just kind of beats you up. You know, it says you're a loser. You won't amount to anything. Um, and it also generally sees the world as kind of a negative place. You know, nothing's good. Nothing's, you know everything's going to shit, all those kind of, kind of things. And it's, it's really a mindset of seeing things in a negative aspect. And uh, yeah, I've struggled with that for, for quite a while. And, um, I still struggle with it from time to time, but I'm much better now. I have some practices and things in place that I do, but, uh, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a big one for me. Yeah. Thanks for that. I mean, <clears throat> I can, I love what you just said about it's a bully because, you know, that's mm. what, you know, it, it, can, it can be like. A, Ari, have you got a bully inside of you? Well, I, I definitely uh, grew up as a, a negative Nancy. I think my family would probably describe me as irritable, maybe like a sour person um, when, I, when I was younger, at least like when I was in my early forties, um, that was a joke. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think one of the, one of the issues is that, uh, we're all getting a lot of negative programming from an early age, you know, not, not just nice guys, but we're, we're you know, we're taught all kinds of, um, lessons that, you know, we can't do something um, that we can't be successful at things. We're told no a lot, you know, those are pretty universal experiences. So, um, we all have a lot of negative programming that we're dealing with. I think nice guys probably have more than the average person because nice guys have also internalized that core sense of badness and defectiveness. Um, and then they go ahead and they create relationships that reinforce that sense of badness. You know, so that that's a negative feedback loop. Um, yeah. So it's it's hard to get out of that pattern. You know, ni nice guys feel like victims, victims of the universe, victims of reality. So I think the the most important shift is to to view your attitude and your thoughts as a choice. You know, that, that's a radical shift I've made just in the last couple of years. And I, you know, I, I use something called positive self-talk practices to, to shift my thoughts. You know, I view every, every thought that I have and everything that I say, I view as a choice. And I, I can either use negative self-talk or I can use positive self-talk. So if I use negative self-talk, I'll edit it. I'll even edit my thoughts. You know, so that's, that's a level of consciousness and, and choice that most people don't adopt, but that's part of how you break out of that negative mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah. I noticed that, you know, even when I was going through this journey and, you know, there was early part in my self-development journey, there was a aspect of, you know, do you love yourself? And I, I could never say no. I can never say yes. I was like, 
though. And there was always aspects of I could always find things wrong with me. And and they became amplified. Now I've I see myself as like two sides. Sometimes I can be really happy, really fun, you know, joyous. And there's another part of me that can get become really critical, negative. And it and I can really affected by my environment and the people around me. Do you ever find that as well? Do you ever find yourself like, you know, what you consume, what you watch on TV or social media and, you know, what you're taking in can really influence you. And that happened to me is whereas, you know, I started to um, hang around with other critical men and women. And I noticed that my energy started to, you know, it says, um, I think there was an experiment done where they had 10 high performers. And what they did was in this high performance, they were all, you know, go-getters, positive attitude kind of um, individuals. And as an experiment, what they did was, I mean, all 10 of them were, you know, they all thought the same way, like real go. And they, they took one guy out and they replaced him with a very negative person. And what they wanted to do was an experiment was to find out, you know, would he, you know, would the rest of the nine uplift him? And what they discovered was that the negative connections and the feelings and the and the thoughts were so strong that it started to overpower the positive thoughts. And he and the people around him in his closer proximity started to become less positive, less go get it, and they started to become more negative in his environment. And so what that showed was that negativity is far more contagious than positive energy is. Yeah. Have you ever found yourself, guys, being really taken in by maybe the news, what's going on in the world, or family members, or even a negative partner? Yeah, I really try to protect myself from that kind of stuff now because it does influence you greatly. Like, I, I don't watch the news. You know, if something's really important going on in the world, I'll, I'll, I'll hear about it, you know, but typically I try not to watch the news because it's all negative and, mm. uh, and it just really kind of starts to taint my picture and view of the world. Um, negative people, similar kind of thing. I just choose not to hang around negative people. If somebody's negative, then, you know, I'm just like, that's not something I'm going to invest my time in. Um, like Ari, I, I think one of the things for me was like, I didn't realize I actually had choices in my thinking, you know, I thought I was like, this is just my thoughts, you know? Um, and then early on in my nice guy recovery, I think it was Dr. Glover who said something about like, you choose your thoughts or you have it, you can choose your thoughts. And I started thinking about that. And as I was thinking negative, I said, what I, cho am I choosing to think this? Why would I, why would I choose to think something negative about myself? Like that would be a, the most ridiculous thing anybody would ever choose to do. So I was like, okay, if I'm not choosing it, where's this thought coming from? You know, well, it's not me because I wouldn't choose it. Therefore it's coming from some other part of me, my, you know, my unconscious, my psyche, some recording, something that I've picked up along the way. So just like you get a song stuck in your head, right? Where'd that song come from? Well, you heard it at one point and then it just kind of, you know, came up from your unconscious and then you're, you're thinking, you, you know, and it's like, Oh, how do I, get, how do you get rid of that song when it's stuck in your head? Well, the only way to really do it is to consciously think of a different song. So when you have a negative thought, if you can catch it and go, Oh, I'm not choosing my thought right now. And you can turn it around to, okay, reframing it. And it's one of the big things we talk about in therapy is reframing your thoughts or reframing the experience to something that's more positive. I'm going to consciously choose to think about positivity. You know, gratitude is one of the ones that it's easy to go to because you can always find a lot of things to be grateful for. And when you switch your mindset from allowing the unconscious brain, unconscious mind to just kind of like ruminate about whatever it decides to pop up at any given moment, as opposed to I'm checking my thought and going, it's a, another mantra I'll have is I'll just kind of catch a thought and I'll ask myself, does this thought serve me? And if the answer mm -hmm. is no, then let's change the thought, you know, and let's start thinking about something positive. I've done it enough now where it used to be kind of a little bit of a struggle where I would, 
I would have a negative thought and I would catch it. And I would like, okay, I'm going to think about something else. And then the negative thought would like pop back in. And, but I've done it enough now where I think I've rewired my brain to a point where I get a negative thought and I'm like, fuck that. I'm not going to go down that path, you know? And, uh, I'm just going to change that thought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just say, um, the self-talk practices have been so helpful for me. And, and one of the, one of the things is noticing when, it, whenever you're using, I can't language, because that's the language of failure, you know? So I'll give you an example from my life. Like I have had this belief or this story that I don't have an off switch with sweets, you know, especially when I go to my parents' house and my mom bakes cookies, you know, I I've been joking about this for decades now, you know, like I, I say, I don't have an off switch. Then I go in and I blame my mom for baking cookies. Uh, but that's just, that's just this, this thought, this language I've been using, you know, it's, I can't language. I, I can't control what I eat with sweets. Um, you know, there's no evidence for that aside, aside from not controlling it in the past. I know that I can do it because I have done it many times, but what I haven't done is change my language, you know, so it is important to change it on the language level and to actually repeat it. So you could build those neural pathways in the brain. So I, I have practice. Um, I have an off switch with sweets or I like to control what I eat. I haven't practiced it enough, but, um, <laughs> you could do it, Ari. You I, can do it. <laughs> I, I, know. I just love cookies, but uh, but but that's how it works. You know, you have to look at whether you're using the language of can't and failure, or the language of yeah. success, which is I can. Um, and it's it's not being overly rosy or po Pollyanna ish to use the language of, of I can. Um, we're not. We're we're talking about something that's a realistic possibility that sets you up for success. You know, yeah, that yeah. that's healthy self-talk. <clears throat> and that's a great, great way of putting it. It's like healthy self-talk because a lot of times that we, the self-talk that I would say most people have is the unhealthy self-talk as well. And, you know, I'm learning to develop more of a healthy self-talk as well. And I, and I see, you know, there's a lot of kids around me that have a really, a great attitude towards life. And one thing I noticed was guys who take things personally end up, guys and girls end up becoming more critical of life. I noticed that when I've taken things more personally, when I've been like more in the victim kind of energy, I noticed my language becoming more negative and, you know, um, blaming and criticizing them in the world. There was a period, you know, when I went through, you know, when you go through uh, different aspects of like the red pill and then, and the, you know, women go through the, the feminism, there's a, there's always a, a divide and there's a hate as well. There's like, fuck, you know, screw you guys or screw, screw women. And, and you go through that phase. And I, I remember, you know, sometimes getting trapped into that as well, because I saw a lot of problems and, you know, th then, when you see constant problems all the time, it wears on, on you. Even when clients come with like problems that you just see problems all the time. So what I'm doing now is like you said, you know, it's like having that more consciousness of ch choices and <clears throat> I'm listening to more things that are more uplifting. And in the book, think and grow rich, Napoleon Hill, you know, one of the most successful books about, about, you know, how, most men have become rich. And one of the secrets that he talks about is how important that these guys had a success attitude. They had success consciousness and they had a real positive can do attitude, which, you know, led to more resilience, power. And, and it was very much about being conscious. And also I want to make sure that the guys don't always think about, you know, there's the other term of toxic positivity that we don't get too far into the other realm when you feel rubbish, when you feel crap about life, it's okay to express that too. And, and that's important. There's a book called The Chimp Paradox where Steve, uh, Dr. Steve Peters talks about, you know, we need to be able to express what we're feeling. If you're annoyed about something, really angry about something in your own private space, allow that expression to come. Once that expression is done, it's like, ah, and then you can start to build a more consciousness because 
if you're uh, working just from your unconscious, like your amygdala emotional brain, trying to bring in those choices sometimes can be a real conflict where, you know, we can always get there. I want to leave you with this quote, right? It says, watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. So be very mindful of the thoughts that we have. It's not, Who we can always. Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> that was said by actually, um, that was said by Mahatma Gandhi. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Similar. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> so, yeah. I love the fact that, you know, you guys have said that choice, we have a choice and absolutely positive attitude is a choice. It does take consistency. It does take a lot more energy. Uh, and, but the results are far better. Guys, this has been the Nice Guy Show. I'm your host, Faisal, and I was joined by Chakanari. If you are on YouTube, please check out the subscribe button, subscribe to our channels. And again, if you're on any of the podcast channels, make sure you like and subscribe and share this with any other guy that would needs help right now, support right now, and some kind of like mental positive energy. We'll see you on the next show. Take care. You've been listening to The Nice Guy Show with certified Nice Guy Recovery Coaches, Ari Graf, Chuck Chapman, and Faisal Kokar. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can listen to our latest episodes and visit us on www.theniceguyshow.com. If you have any topics you'd like to hear us discuss, send us an email at support at theniceguyshow.com. Thanks for listening.